So it's Sunday, the 15th of March, 2020. I wonder if that's a date that in future years we'll look back on as being significant in some way. Possibly not, who knows. <laughs> anyway, I've left it too late to go further afield. It's about three o'clock. So I'm just gonna go for a little bit of a local walk. I spent yesterday and today finishing off this week's video, that glorious walk on the Capitol Ring. So what I wanna do today, actually, something I've been meaning to do for a while, is the little walk across Wanstead Flats, linking up the Second World War sites over here on Wanstead Flats. Um, something I've not consciously done myself before, so I'm quite interested to do it as a continuous route today. Um, there's a couple of real treats here, buried in this glorious open space that you wouldn't necessarily know that they were there or what they were for. Let's have a look. And of course, it's just started to rain very lightly. It's a real theme of this year, isn't it? Last time we were over here shooting a video, it was still very much recovering from the terrible fires that ravaged across Wanstead Flats. It's wonderful to see the way it's all growing back now. Before we move on to the Second World War associations of Wanstead Flats, it's worth remembering that during the London Olympics of 2012, they had uh, anti-aircraft missiles and snipers on the top of those blocks of flats you see over there the iconic John Walsh and Fred Wig Towers. So this area over here, in the central portion of Wanstead Flats, was an Italian prisoner of war camp during the Second World War. Apparently, you could still see the goalposts that they'd erected until the 70s. My wife's grandfather, Valentino, had been an Italian prisoner of war of the British and we always wondered whether he had been uh, sent here to Wanstead Flats. I think it's incredibly unlikely, but <laughs> you never know. I think in days gone by, they used to muster the soldiers over here and do drills and exercises. I think that was more in the 18th century and perhaps the early 19th century. And this area here was also used by the police during the London Olympics. So it's military usage spans hundreds of years. Now this patch of ground here is used as the fairground. It's always a wonderful sight on a summer evening. It's interesting that they're now referring to it as Wanstead Heath rather than Wanstead Flats. Of course this is an important site for a number of species, ground nesting birds particularly, also um, certain types of uh, bees are found here, there's stag beetles and slow worms and all sorts. These kind of angry looking bats. You have to get across this road, it's not always the easiest thing in the world to do. And then we're going to progress over the next section of Wanstead Flats. So we're going to take the path here by gate number 188 and go up the side of the section here where the uh, model aircraft are flown. I haven't seen anyone doing that for a while. We are so blessed to have this glorious open space on our doorstep here. This is one of my favourite places in the entire world. Now there's an interesting Second World War relic buried away in one of these woods up here. And just a reminder that um, you're on land now, owned by the Corporation of London. Yeah. Although, um, once the flats itself belongs to the Corporation of London, it sits between three boroughs that all kind of meet in the corners here. We have Wolfham Forest, where I've just come from, Leighton Stone. We have Redbridge up here, Aldersbrook and Wanstead. And down here, Forest Gate, we have Newham and Manor Park, of course. So really, you've got four administrative bodies all kind of meeting here in one place. It's kind of wonderful, isn't it? I love things like that. Right, so we're going to follow this path here directly to that wood straight ahead. I love the way someone's put some wooden blocks here on the tree to help people climb. So we follow this path here around the edge of this wood through this growth on the right. What is this? Is this broom, perhaps? I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments below. And this second wood here is the one that we're heading for. I 
We've got great views back across towards Canary Wharf there. It's really beautiful at night time. It's all lit up. Something I've not really done before actually, stand back from this wood and to see the shape of the land here. And I think over to the right, just along here, you can see some trenches, although there are trenches all over once the flat's dug for drainage, I think mostly. But I think you can see, slightly see sort of raised areas within the wood. I'm gonna to go to one particular bit actually where it's really obvious. See this concrete here poking up from the soil from the ground and you can see look it's part of a raised platform first time I came across this was one summer evening and I, at the time I assumed it might have been an anti-aircraft gun emplacement but actually it's only subsequent reading that's shown me that actually I think it's um, sort of some sort of ancillary building associated with the war effort on Wanstead Flats. It could have been a storage place, it could have been a hut where people, where people stayed overnight, where crews, anti-aircraft gun crews stayed or where soldiers were stationed. Um, it's kind of a strange and mysterious spot, isn't it? I should say there's a number of really good sources of information about the wartime use of Wanstead Flats online and I will, um, I will put links below to a few of those websites. The Leighton and Leighton Stone Historical Society, the wonderful Leighton Stone and Leighton Historical Society, actually has a pamphlet about the POW camp and uh, the wartime use of Wanstead Flats. And I think as well there is a, a leaflet showing you a walk you can do around the whole of the flats with other sites as well. So next we're going to go and find the barrage balloon posts more wonderful relics and here's the first of the barrage balloon posts what a majestic thing I remember the first time I saw them and I went home to look up what they were I must admit I didn't guess that this is what they were and there are three of them in total although I'm pretty sure I've shown you those barrage balloon posts in a previous video I really wanted to link them together with the other sites to kind of create a collective picture of these locations on Wanstead Flats where people are walking their dogs, there's football matches going on over there, people fly their model aeroplanes. I think there's some people that get up to other things in those woods where the uh, concrete base is as well. These things are embedded in the everyday landscape and we pass them by often without giving them a second thought. This is probably the best preserved one, isn't it? You have to imagine those enormous great barrage balloons that would have been tethered in the sky above where we're stood now. So if you can see the church spire there and the road on the far side of Wanstow Flats, that's where we are heading next. We'll just follow this track here up towards that wood and around the edge of it there. So this white panelled building here was, uh, I think was used as crew quarters for the, for the crews manning the anti-aircraft gun, which was somewhere in this area here, I'm not precisely sure where. It's said to be uh, opposite the end of Herringate Road. And this hut now, I believe, is used by the ground staff tending the football pitches. You wouldn't really know about its former life, would you, just from looking at it? So we're just gonna go out onto the road to find the last location on this uh, Wanstead Flats in World War II walk. You can follow this path through the woodland just to the left of the, of the white hut there. So this brick wall here that runs along the side of the path is clearly older than the uh, houses on the other side there which look like they're 70s or 80s. I don't know if this might be associated with the, uh, with the farm that was here. So 
So this brick building here, which sits just behind the electricity substation, was a decontamination block to be used in the event of a gas attack. You can see it sits just in front of the crew quarters there. And this area to the right here is most likely where the anti-aircraft gun was, said to be opposite the end of Herringate Road. So that really marks the end of our Second World War on Wanstead Flats walk, or Wanstead Flats Second World War walk. Either way, it's quite a mouthful, isn't it? It's lovely to bring you out over here. I come over here all the time, actually. And I think, I don't know how many videos I've made that cross through, across Wanstead Flats, but there's always more to discover. And I really enjoyed linking those sites together. I know there's a lot of uh, anxiety and uncertainty around at the moment, things going on in the world, but, you know, take care. We can always go out for a walk together. I mean, there's about, <laughs> there's about 150 of these videos now. <laughs> so there's plenty of stuff if you find yourself stuck indoors for a while. Um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. Who knows where it may be?